We're, we're Travis, Travis and Lindsay, and, and we're, we're just traveling, traveling in Ghent. <laughs> Being real European tourists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just got off the train. We're here in Ghent. My first time exploring this wonderful city in Belgium. Can't wait to check it out for the whole day. And there is a massive event going on called Ghent Fest. Yeah. So super excited about how that is going. Let's check it out. Go. My first time in Europe and Lindsay's home country. So everyone in at least Belgium, <laughs> they like to take bikes everywhere, which is smart, easier than cars. With over a quarter million people in this city, green spaces are limited, but we start our journey with this one, Citadel Park. Ghent, in the 14th century, was actually one of the largest and most affluent cities in Northern Europe, and still maintains that charm today. Interesting to note that the roads need to be shared with the tram, the bikes, cars, trucks, everything. <laughs> it's a little chaotic to me. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Waterways are everywhere in this city and boaters of some kind are on just about all of them. Medieval architectural churches fill the city center and dominate all of the buildings in the area. There's just lots going on. Just a few churches, some live <laughs> music, yeah. You can see there's lots going on for the event. Look at the size of this thing. Wow. So behind us we have something that is typical for Europe as well. These people are called uh, street orgel, street orgel musicians. So they have like small carts with different songs on it and you can pay for it and uh, ask for a song and then he's gonna play it for you. <laughs> So this is something specifically Flemish, is that every Flemish city or town, they have their own giants. So like here, these are the giants of Ghent, and once a year they come outside and they go on a parade. And also each individual giant has their own name. I think that's pretty cool. Everywhere you go, centuries-old architecture stands out amongst the modern buildings and is extremely impressive. Large amounts of art also fill this old city. This spot here is rightly named Graffiti Alley. And you can often find artists putting up something new on this interesting canvas. The Ghent Festival happening now will have up to 1.5 million people visiting the city over a 10 day period in July and through the Belgian national holiday of July 21st. You know which one? Tomato. Tomatoes. Ooh. Lunchtime in Ghent. Today is a delicious soup with a view, but there are so many traditional meals and foods in Europe that I am not familiar with, but I'm trying lots. This is Gravenstein, a medieval castle from 1180, sits right in the center of the city. The castle was actually built on top of an older fortification from the 800s and was built over the centuries to be a court, a prison, and even a cotton factory. This is the area of Grasley, which was once a medieval port, but is now one of the cultural and tourist hotspots of the city. This part of the city is the oldest, dating back to the 5th century, and again with all manner of watercraft. I'm not sure if the buskers in the city are part of the festival or here to capitalize on the event, but it adds an air of enjoyment. So here behind me, you can buy Kuberdons, or also Ghent noses. 
that's what we, what we call. So in 1873, I think, there was a pharmacist that accidentally made his candy because he was trying to store medicine longer. So he added a lot of sugar to it. And now it is a candy that you can only get in Belgium. So I'm gonna let Travis try it and see what he thinks of it. <laughs> One hour in Bruges and you'll return. <laughs> Woo! This is the gold. <laughs> Have a try. You need to try a purple one. That's the original one. Okay, purple. This is the original flavor. It looks like a Hershey's Kiss. <laughs> I don't think it's going to taste like one. It's, uh, it's really sweet. It's chewy like a, like a gumdrop. Look at that. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good though. Um, I couldn't eat too many of these. It's super sweet, like cotton candy it's sweet. It's super sweet. And another fun fact, so first of all, we call this candy Couperdon as well. And a fun fact, those vendors behind us, I don't know if you can see them, but there's two of them. And there used to be a rivalry here on this square because both of these vendors, they are so convinced of themselves that they are the first and the only real ones selling Couperdons. So it has been a rivalry here for years. It looks like they kind of solved it now. So it looks like they're getting along better now. Apparently it's a pretty common place to come here and drink coffee, but also you can do your laundry here while you drink your coffee. <laughs> it's a really interesting hangout spot. <laughs> it's just a fancy laundromat. <laughs> More buskers as we walk on. There's literally something for all ages as we saw someone doing children's magic just before. So much choice! Yummy! Are you hungry? Very. That's a nice box of fries. <laughs> and it is in a puntzak. That's how Belgians eat fries. Some mayo on it. Yummy. So how did you like your first European city? Yeah, it was great. Spent the day exploring the city of Ghent here in Belgium. Um, yeah, it's different than anything I've ever seen in North America, that's for sure. And super cool and I can't wait to explore more. That's what we will do. <laughs> more videos to come on Just Traveling. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Bruges for the tourists. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm gonna go to Bruges too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go see Bruges and we're gonna wanna come back to Ghent immediately. <laughs> One hour in Bruges and you'll return. <laughs> Woo! This is the gold. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.